In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a basic and simplified explanation of cathedral or vaulted ceilings and um, why we don't remove ceiling joists or rafter ties and uh, just go ahead and, you know, why you can't, I should say, remove ceiling joists and simply put uh, drywall the bottom of the rafters if you don't have the right type of framing. Now, a regular roof system like this, conventional roof system here, the weight is actually um, that is in a downward motion is going to be applied to the rafters and the ridge and can actually force the walls out. Um, it can bow these walls out and create a dip in the center of the ridge. And the reason for that is because there isn't anything tying it together. With the ceiling joists and the rafter ties, you're creating a connection from one side of the wall to the other side of the wall. So as the weight is placed on the or the weight, just the basic weight of the roof by itself, I'm not talking about adding snow or debris onto the top of the roof. <clears throat> the weight that would be transferred in this area here, this this part right here, is going to want to force the wall out. It's going to want to push push it out and let this sag down. Now, with this setup right here, I'm not about to suggest that you're not going to get a sag in the roof. If you have um, rafter ties or ceiling joists and the center of your ridge or parts of your roof are sagging, that would probably have something to do more with the um, engineering of the materials. Maybe they're not the right size. Let's say you have a 2x6 rafter that's sagging. It might have needed to be a 2x8. So this right here, typical way to frame a roof, conventionally frame roof with a flat ceiling. Now let's take a look at another common way that uh, you would frame a cathedral or vaulted ceiling without ceiling joists or rafter ties. Now this way right here is going to require a ridge beam. And I'm going to show you two methods. This method right here and the next method I will show you will be where I raise the ridge up. So this particular method right here, the rafters are going to lap and connect to each other. The other one, the ridge, they will connect to the ridge. So in this one right here, let's take a look at how the weight, the load would be distributed. The load from the roof is going to set on the beam and then it is going to come down the um, supporting post on the side here. Now with this system right here, you aren't going to have the, the, the weight of the roof is going to be or any load on the roof is going to be transferred between the wall and the supporting beam and uh, on both sides. So uh, you're not going to have the walls spreading out on something like this. And I'm not I'm not suggesting you can't have the wall spread out. I've actually seen it on longer walls. Um, but the rafters themselves will actually help to um, prevent the walls from spreading out because this is where the tie is. The rafters will actually form a nice brace bracing system, let's say, and uh, and keep the walls from spreading out because the weight on the rafters, the load that is transferred on, onto the rafters, isn't going to be moving the rafters down, um, um, creating a sagging ridge, which of course would force the would force the walls out. It's actually supporting the walls. So the, the ridge beam is actually supporting it with no movement down here. You're not going to get the, the walls to spread out. And I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at how we would connect the rafters here. This is actually um, lapping the rafters. You would nail into the rafters, uh, maybe put uh, you know three nails on each side, something like that. And then you would install some ridge blocks. And of course you would have seat cuts at the bottom for the rafters and then finish the end off um, with a, let's just go ahead and take a look at finishing the ridge off. 
sorry about that. You'd basically just have two rafters that would line up at the end of the ridge. Here's the other method I was referring to. We would have the rafters attaching to the ridge. And then, of course, the posts and the beams. Now, I wanted to point out here I have a post that's sitting on top of a wall. We have a supporting post under the wall. Over here, the post goes all the way up. Um, I would imagine both methods would be fine, but um, because this method right here creates a break in the a structural break that uh, would need a strap. You need to put a strap on the wall on the other side. And this one right here, you're just transferring the weight down, but you could actually create a hinge point here. A lot of um, engineers don't like to see it. They'd rather see the strap on the wall with a full length post than something like this. But I'll leave that up to you. Remember, this is the basics. I don't want to get carried away here, even though I just did. What the heck? So roof rafters that attach to the ridge beam instead of going over it. Something like this will give you more area if you're looking for a taller ceiling. And um, sometimes you can use larger rafters if you want the ceiling to be flat. You don't want to be able to see the ridge beam. Don't forget, um, too, that the rafter sizes will depend upon the insulation you're going to be using or your local community requires. So a lot of times we used to use uh, R30, which was, I believe, nine and a half inches or, or 10 inches. And we could put the R30 in the nine and a half inch um, wide roof rafters. We could use them with that. We couldn't use them with two by eights. And every once in a while, I'd come to a job where they would have two by eights on a remodel and it would create problems for the insulation. So keep that in mind when you're designing your roof um, system also. So this is just the basic seat cut, give you an idea. And that's it for the video. I made it uh, because there was a question asked um, to me. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area or email them to me and I will get to them as soon as possible. Don't forget to visit our website, homebuildingandrepairs.com, for more home tips and construction ideas.